Okay, so for everybody who's completely confused, we're going to go through some of the problems, not all, but those on the titrations notes and problems. Um, the idea is to look at how to calculate various different points along a pH curve, whether it be strong versus strong or strong versus weak combinations of acids and bases. Um, the simplest versions are the strong acid, strong base. They, of course, have your net ionic equation, hydrogen plus hydroxide yields water, so they're neutralizations. And in each one of these cases, because everything goes to completion, you really just have to figure out either the hydrogen concentration or the hydroxide concentration, depending on what you have excess of, and then take the negative log. Um, so at the equivalence point, you should technically have a neutral solution because moles of hydrogen should equal moles of hydroxide. And then before the equivalence point, um, pH is determined by taking the log of the moles of hydrogen left after the reaction divided by the total volume in the container. So the only difference here might be that you might have to deal with a difference in volume. So let's take a look at our first problem. All right, exercise one, a strong acid, strong base titration. So we have, um, what we are looking at is titration of 25 milliliters of 0.1 molar HCl with 0.1 molar NaOH, so strong acid and strong base. Um, so what we have to look at here is essentially, first thing I like to do with any of these problems is figure out what the equivalence point is supposed to be. So you can use stoichiometry to do that, that's probably the easiest thing. Again, my equation, NaOH plus HCl yields NaCl and water, but of course our ions are um, spectators, so we can remove the sodium, and that leaves us with hydroxide. We can remove the chloride, that leaves us with hydrogen, and then these are spectators, so that leaves us with water, so there's our net ionic equation. So kind of off to the side over here, I'm going to figure out what the equivalence point is supposed to be. So 25 milliliters is 0.025 liters times 0.1 moles per liter of the uh, HCl, or H plus, I guess I should say, would be more efficient. And then we also have 0.1 molar NaOH. So point, or, uh, 1 mole of H plus to 1 mole of OH minus. And then I ran out of space, so I'll put it down here. So times uh, 0.1 molar, so 0.1 mole of OH minus for one liter. So we multiply all those through, and we'll see what we get. Or you can note that these are the same concentration, and since they are supposed to be equal numbers of moles, they should be equal. Otherwise, it's 0.025 times 0.1 divided by 0.1, so look, you get 0.025 or 25 milliliters. Should be what you use up for the NaOH to get to your equivalence point. So that'll give you a hint down here at part C. All right, before the addition of any sodium hydroxide, we have only HCl in the beaker, which is H plus and Cl minus. So if we have 0.1 molar here, that means we have 0.1 molar of each of those. So it's just the negative log of 0.1, and that gives us a pH of 1. Okay. After the addition of 24 milliliters of 0.1 molar NaOH, 24 milliliters is still less than the equivalence point, so we have not yet hit the equivalence point. A couple of ways to do this is either a BCA chart or to just do, you know, the calculations and figure it out. The BCA chart is a really simple and straightforward way to do it. So H plus plus OH minus yields H2O. So the hydrogen concentration We've added, or we started off with 25 milliliters times 0.1 molar. 
Hydroxide, we have 24 milliliters of 0.1 molar. And we use both of those to get the number of moles. So that would be 0 0.0025 moles of acid and 0 0.0024 moles of base. Pick the one that you're using up completely because this reaction goes to completion. So then minus 0 0.0024 for both the acid and the base. You have just a tiny bit of acid left. 0 0.0001 moles. Here you have no base left. Okay, and then we need to divide by the new volume. So V total. You started off with 25 milliliters of acid plus 24 milliliters of base. So that's 49 milliliters or 0.049 milliliters. It gives you a new concentration of 0 0.0020 molar H plus. So then you can take the negative log of that. And you get the pH is 2.69. And since we really have three sig figs here, 2.690. At the equivalence point, strong acid, strong base, you have equal volumes of each. You have um, H plus equals OH minus, and by definition, that tells you that the pH is 7. Alrighty, after the addition of 26 milliliters, of 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide is very similar to B, except now the acid is your limiting reactant. So H plus plus OH minus yields H2O. The acid, we had 0.025 liters times 0.1 molar. The base, 0.026 liters times 0.1 molar. 0 0.0025 moles, 0 0.0026 moles, that's our before. Our change, again, is going to use up everything. Now you can see that our acid is limiting. So that's going to leave us no acid left. And 0 0.0001 moles of base left. Again, divide it by the total volume. So now we had 25 plus 26, so that's 51 milliliters. Gives me a concentration of, and again, that's an OH concentration of 0 0.00196 molar. So then I can get the POH. is 2.7075 and the pH is 14 minus that. So the pH is 11.292. Okay, the last part we have to look at is sketching the actual curve. Um, so if we wanted to label the various points, when you're sketching the, the pH curves, you usually have the, uh, the pH on the left side of the scale and then you usually have your titrant added at the bottom. That's the stuff that's in the burette. So in this case, we are titrating with the sodium hydroxide. Okay, so we'll call that 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, so it's not perfect, but we'll get, the, we'll get the general idea here. So initially we started off, we had a pH of 1. Um, how much do we end up having to add? So we'll add it up to 26 here. 
Uh, we'll just go by tens. Okay, we'll just pretend that one's not there. Okay, so initially we had a pH of 1 when we were at 0. So that would be right about here. That would be point A. Um, at point B, we had 24 milliliters of 0.1 molar, and it had gone a whopping 2.7, so somewhere maybe in here. And then when we added one more milliliter, it went up to 7. And then when we added one more milliliter after that, it went up to 11.2, so somewhere maybe in here. And if we had continued on, it would have done the same thing. So our curve pretty much is flat at the bottom, and then it would continue on here if we, if we added on. So point A was right here initially, point B right before the equivalence point, point C at the equivalence point, and then point D at the after the equivalence point. And that's what a strong acid, strong base curve generally looks like. You're pretty well flat, you go straight up, you're pretty well flat. When you want to find the equivalence point, if you don't have a pH meter, the way that you do that is you use a ruler and you essentially draw a straight line. I know I'm not using a ruler, but you'll understand during across each of the straight portions and then you measure the distance from the top line to the bottom line and halfway between represents your equivalence point. 